Hello everyone and welcome to this breakdown of chapter 15 of The Mandalorian. The season finale drops today. So before you watch that, make sure you watch my previous video which has recapped all the chapters up to chapter 15, The Believer. Let's get right into it. The prisoner in the opening scene is played by Bill Burr, another Breaking Bad veteran after Giancarlo Esposito who plays Moff Gideon, the big bad of this series. This character was introduced in the chapter called The Prisoner in the first season of The Mandalorian. The character's name is Mayfeld and he is the principal character, apart from Mando of course, to play in this episode. Speaking of names, I really like how Gina Carano's character is named Cara Dune after the awesome sci-fi novel written by Frank Herbert and the movie which is coming out is going to be awesome max. Mando needs Mayfeld's help because he wants to track down Moff Gideon's Imperial Cruiser because that's where his kid, Baby Yoda, is. Or shall we say, Grogu. Guided by Mayfeld, Mando, Boba Fett, Fennec Shan and Cara Dune go to a planet called Mora on which there is a secret Imperial mining base. Once they recon the base, surprise surprise, nobody apart from Mando can accompany Mayfeld into the base to infiltrate it Cara Dune knocks out a couple of stormtroopers from a mining truck, they hijack it and Mando has to change into a stormtrooper's outfit, mask on obviously. As they are riding along to the base, they pass some wistful kids in slow-mo just to show how bad life is on that planet for the natives. We also get to see how Mayfeld holds his views of war in utter disregard of being an Imperial stormtrooper. Sorry, ex-Imperial stormtrooper. Mayfield drops the example of Alderaan, the planet which is home to Princess Leia Organa and which was blown up by the Death Star in the original Star Wars trilogy. Side note, it is also referenced in Red Hot Chili Peppers' awesome super duper smash hit, Californication. The mining truck they have hijacked is itself ambushed by the native pirates and Mando gets to show off his awesome combat skills in very well orchestrated action sequences. When the pirates turn suicide bombers, all hope seems lost, but Mando still believes. And his belief pays off when TIE cruisers approach and blast off the pirates and save the day. Mando and Mayfeld get a hero's welcome into the Imperial mining base, so they are that much closer to getting the data that they need. But to quote another RHCP line, Nothing ever goes according to plan. And so they hit a snag because one of Mayfeld's ex-commanders is sitting in the mess hall. Mando's love for Grogu is so great that he volunteers to go to the terminal even though Mayfeld tells him that he will have to take off his helmet because the computer terminal for some reason needs to scan the user's face. Now this is not a security measure because Pedro Pascal takes off his Stormtrooper helmet and lets the computer scan his face and no alarms go off. It seems that it's just there for recording whoever is downloading that data. Will this come into play in the season finale? Pedro Pascal revealing his face is kind of like fan service by Disney because the clamor of the fandom to show the true face of the Mandalorian had been growing and reaching a crescendo. Even though he gets the data, he is interrupted by the commander who might know Mayfield. But Mayfield steps in at the right moment and they sit down to have a drink with that officer who Mayfeld blows away in an act of crazy passion. I have to say that the character of the commander deserved to die because he was glorifying war of all things. Mayfeld and Mando carry out their escape plan helped by the sniping skills of Cara Dune and Fennec Shand played awesomely by Gina Carano and Ming Na Wen. Boba Fett picks them up in his ship from the roof of the refinery and as a parting shot, Mayfield fires a cycler rifle sniper bullet into the exact spot at the refinery which causes it to blow up in smithereens. Q Fennec Shand saying nice shot which reminded me of a great song by a band called Filter which said hey man nice shot. Boba Fett's ship is pursued by the TIE starfighters but Boba Fett drops an awesome axe bomb and blows them apart. They meet up with Fennec Shand and Cara Dune on the ground. Mando slips back into his Mando armor and they let Mayfeld go because he has been an awesome help to them 
and because I think he deserves to be let loose, especially since he said that he hadn't seen Mando's face, even though he's one of the few people alive who actually has seen it and lived to tell the tale. We are not talking about IG-11, the droid voiced by Taika Waititi in the first season, because by his own admission, he was not a living thing. I guess that is one of the loopholes in the way of the Mandalore. Mando records a bone-chilling paraphrase of Moff Gideon's monologue from the first season finale and let's see how the season 2 chapter finale turns out when it drops on 18th December 2020. Will we see Bo-Katan attack alongside Mando and try and reclaim her dark saber from Moff Gideon? Or will the awesome Max crew of Boba Fett, Cara Dune, Fennec Shand, Grief Karga and The Mandalorian take it upon themselves to rescue baby Yoda. Will there be a last minute Deus Ex Machina appearance from the New Republic? Let's watch Chapter 16, the Season 2 finale of The Mandalorian and find out. May the Force be with you, stay safe and please wear a mask. This is the way.